Welcome to Brain Games. This is Frankie from the New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project. Each Thursday at 1 p.m., my co-host Aaron and I invite you to join us on Zoom for live interactive board games. Test your creativity and knowledge and have fun. Go to our website shown on the screen to find the link to join. Before we start, Aaron is going to talk about the many online offerings of New Jersey Self-Advocacy Project. So here you go. This is what we have going on throughout the week. Mondays, we have uh, Veronica from Vero Pure Green posting on our social media. And that's on all of our social media. Tuesdays, we have our Stay Healthy at Home webinar. That's at 2 p.m. And we have a really fun one coming up on Tuesday. Uh, if you would like to see webinars from the past, you can go on our website. They are all recorded. And you can also get the handouts and the slides for that. Um, if you want to sign up for the new ones, again, you can go to our website, which is at the bottom of this page. On Wednesdays, we have interactive Zoom events for HLP Live, and that's 11 a.m. <laughs> we also post in-home trainings video on our social media as well. Uh, Thursdays, obviously, we play brain games. And then Fridays, we post a recipe video. And we also have another HLP live session with in-home training. And that is at 1 p.m. So we also have trainings we're doing all around the state virtually. So we um, have an array of trainings already made. You can go on our website and uh, sign up for at our uh, awesome training page that Frankie made. And that is uh, ready to go right on our website. Easy link to follow. Enter in your information and you can see all of the trainings that we provide as well. So we're going to um, do a quiz on the Americans with Disabilities Act, the ADA. So we'll um, go through together. We've got a couple different kinds of questions. And, you know, we'll read through the questions and you can feel free to uh, say out loud or in the chat what you think the answers might be and we'll find out the right answers together. And if you wanna, you know, keep score to yourself, say how many you got right, you know, for fun, feel free. Um, so let's get started. Okay. So which of the following movies share an anniversary year with the Americans with Disabilities Act? So it was uh, in 1990 when it was signed. Um, so what movies do you think came out in the year 1990? So A is Home Alone and Dances with Wolves. B is Total Recall and Ghost. And C is All of the Above. It's C. Okay, I'm, I'm here in C, I'm here in A, and I've seen A, B, and C in the chat as well. We are you know, a little bit divided here. A. Home Alone, which is A. Ready to see all the above. All right. So we got a couple different answers. Have you guys seen any of these movies? Yeah. I've seen one. Oh, I love Home Alone. Home Alone. Can I even yeah. I feel like we've all seen Home Alone, right? <laughs> oh, okay. Many times. Oh, yeah. So let's find out what the answer is. It is C, all of the above. So all of those movies came out in the year 1990. So good job, everyone who said C. And, you know, if you said A and B, you were also right. Just know that <laughs> the other movies also came out in 1990. All right. Good job. So true or false, according to the ADA, it is optional to provide reasonable accommodations to people with disabilities. True or like, false. Like we talked about last time, reasonable accommodations are changes that can be made to a place like an office or a school to help folks with disabilities do their job or do the work that they're hired to do um, without, yeah, I see some guesses in the chat. Okay. 
Do we think it's true that reasonable accommodations are optional or false? All right. So when we say optional too, you know, then that means that it's something like, you know, maybe I'll do it, maybe not. You know, it's not all the time. So I see, okay. Pretty much it looks like I'm seeing all A's for true. So let's find out. All right, so this is actually E false because the ADA um, requires employers to provide reasonable accommodations to employees who have disabilities. If there, you know, if there's a reasonable accommodation as Ashley explained what that might mean, um, you know, the ADA says you really need to, to do that for your employee. All right, so I think we learned a little something there, right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> okay, it's a little tricky with the wording. Next question. Okay, true or false? The ADA applies only in cases of K through 12 education, but not college, graduate school, or vocational training. I think A, true, or B, false. So ADA just in the earlier years, K through 12, you know, in um, elementary school and high school, or does it also apply to college, graduate school, and vocational training? <laughs> Adam is this A, 100%. <laughs> wow, oh. wrong guess. Oh, you good luck, kid, I see. <laughs> Eddie says B, going against the grain. All right, everyone got their answers in. No, now you're now you're 100 for B, Adam. <laughs> you guys are 100 percent going to be ADA experts by the end of this trivia game. That's for sure. All right, ready for the answer? Yeah. All right. All right, so this what? one is false. The ADA applies to the above forms of education. So K through 12 and college and graduate school, vocational training, but also licensing tests, standardized tests and more. So, so that's the ADA important. really covers that's all of your education. That's important to know. The ADA is for all types of education and schooling and training. It's not just in elementary school or high school. It applies in colleges as well. And there's a lot of great college programs specifically designed for students with disabilities here in New Jersey. So the ADA applies there as well. All right. Okay, moving on. Again. So true or false, the ADA does not apply to buildings built before the ADA was passed in 1990. So do we think that the ADA applies to buildings built before 1990? So true would mean it does not apply to buildings built before 1990, and false would mean it does apply to buildings no matter the year they were built. A or B. A or, well, yeah, A or B is definitely <laughs> correct. I mean, it's one of them. <laughs> Adam's being clever. Okay. Oh, I'm seeing, I think, both answers. I'm not sure which one this one's for now. <laughs> okay. Everyone has their answers ready? Yeah, good boy. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I'm really bad. So this hey, one is B, false. Oh, so the ADA requires the removal of barriers to accessibility in older buildings unless removing a barrier is not readily achievable. So if, if there's certain cases where it might really not be possible, but anywhere that it is, 
Um, it still needs to happen, even if the if it's an older building. All right, so make sure you give yourself a point if you put B false. All right. I think this is our last true and false. <laughs> um, organizations that sponsor sports must provide a person who has a disability an equal opportunity to both try out for and compete on teams. True or false? Okay, I'm seeing a lot. Oh, actually, I'm seeing A and B. Both. We've got both options going again. We got a thumbs up. <laughs> okay, so we've split the room again, I think, here. Ready for the answer? I'm fine. Okay. So this is true, hey. So reasonable accommodations must be provided for athletes that have a disability and that they're, if they're otherwise qualified to participate in the sport or activity in question. All right. Because remember the ADA is all about creating opportunities for people with disabilities to get involved in different activities, including sports. So if you are in school and you're interested in trying out for a sports team, that should be available to you. That should be something you are allowed to do. And then if you qualify for the team, you're on the team. That's how it should work. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay, so we've got a couple options here, multiple choice. So if a blind or low vision person needs assistance at a doctor's office, they have a legally protected right under the ADA to ask for A, braille or large print materials, B, assistance filling out required forms, C, staff identifying themselves upon entering the room, D, orientation to a hospital room and away to the nurse's station or E, any of the above. So what is something a, a person with low vision uh, or a person who is blind um, might ask for um, and under the ADA, they would have the right to ask for these? A, B, C, D, or E. Okay. Oh, I'm seeing a lot of E's. We're feeling any of the above. All right. Okay, I feel like we're all in agreement on this one. All right, ready for the answer? Yes. Okay. What? coming in again but <laughs> hey. oh, I did it uh, I messed that one up but you are right <laughs> it is E <laughs> let me just go back I accidentally duplicated my slide there but um, you guys did the right answer it is E all of the above and any of those options is something that, man, what did I do here? So basically, you know, if someone is blind or has a visual impairment, they have the right to get the information from the doctor in a way that they understand. So they may need something printed out in larger font so it's easier to read. Because remember, there's people with low vision who can still see certain type or certain type font, um, but might struggle to read really small font. And there's people who are completely blind, who don't have any vision uh, or don't have any sight. So they might need a tour of the, the office. They might need to know, you know, someone can help them find the restroom or the nurse's station or figure out what's in the office. 
And that would also mean a doctor or nurse coming into the exam room should let that person know who they are and what their title is because, yeah. you know, they're not able to see who's coming into the room. So those are all protected accommodations under the ADA. Thank you, Ashley. Um, yeah, and good job. Everyone uh, got that one right, I think. All right. Okay. <laughs> so which of the following accommodations is a college or university uh, student with a disability um, under the ADA, which of the following accommodations do they do? Um, a is a additional time or a distraction free alternative setting for tests. Um, B, free tuition. C, no homework. D, option to skip lectures. Or E, all of the above. What e. is something under the ADA that is a reasonable accommodation a person with a student with a disability um, could get? So what rights do you think a student with a disability in college has? Do they have the right to additional time on their tests and to be able to take their tests in a distraction-free environment? That's A. Do you think they're entitled to free tuition? That's B. Do you think that students with disabilities in college are allowed to do no homework? That's C. And D is option to skip lectures. So that would be like skipping class. If you think it's all of these answers, then it's that's letter E. What do we think? I see Jamara said A. Adam has E. That's what he's thinking about it. And also put A. <laughs> you could change your answers. It's fine. Anyone else have any other thought? Hmm. Icky. All right. Right. You ready for the answers then? Yep. Yeah. All right. Yep. Yeah. Let's see if I did this slide right. All right, so it uh -huh. was A. All right. Great job. Additional time or a distraction-free alternate setting for tests. That is something that is a reasonable uh, accommodation, but you know, the ADA is not gonna let you just skip your classes or get out of your homework or, you know, get everything for free. <laughs> That was great. So Myra, you guessed A, that's absolutely right. The ADA yeah, says that students with disabilities can take it. They have, they're taking the same test, but they might be taking it in a different place where it's a little bit quieter. There's not as much distraction or noise happening. Exactly. Right. And I also just want to commend you for answering, you know, on the question that uh, it was difficult. We didn't have a lot of answers in there. So brave and correct is great. <laughs> Good way to be. All right. Man, I messed up these animations, but <laughs> okay. A service animal is trained to do work or perform tasks for the benefit of an individual with a disability. Which type of animal is not an acceptable service animal option under the ADA. So A is dog, B is pig, and C is a miniature horse. Okay. And Arthur and CJ have B, Premier has C.
I got another bean from Jemira. Okay. So we're feeling pig, maybe horse. Hi, hi. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Okay, you guys ready for the answer? Yes. Okay. So it is B pig. Okay, so dogs are the only official animal listed under Title II and Title III of the ADA, but it does also mention for a miniature horse that entities must make reasonable modifications and policies to allow miniature horses if they have been individually trained to do work or perform tasks for individuals with disabilities. So if you especially have a miniature horse and it's been trained as a service animal, and you know you can get your horse where it needs to be reasonably. It can be a miniature horse, but uh, they don't talk about pigs. Pigs aren't listed under um, the ADA under service animals, um, but there's a broad range of animals that can be emotional support animals. So you might find a pig in that role, but uh, not under a service animal. So that's an important difference. There are emotional support animals that can help people with a variety of different um, symptoms, but the only animals that are included as service animals under the ADA are dogs. So miniature horses, uh, if they have very specific training, then they may be able to um, be included under uh, protections of the ADA but dogs are kind of the number one uh, only animal listed in the ADA as service working animals. So don't try to bring a peacock on a plane and say that's a service animal. That doesn't work. Someone tried it and it doesn't work. <laughs> <laughs> I know I wouldn't want to be on a plane with a peacock. They are... There are some special birds that <laughs> they should get their own, uh, you know, they'd need their own aisle, I think, with that tail. For sure. I don't think anyone would be happy about it, including the peacock. Mm. All right. Good job. I was going to pick it. <laughs> well, uh, um, no comment on that. <laughs> All right, so this is a, um, maybe a little bit of a math question. Um, the ADA was signed into law in 1990. So we are celebrating its blank anniversary this year. So what anniversary would it be for the ADA if it was signed in 1990 and now we're in 2021? So the 21st anniversary, the 30th anniversary or the 31st anniversary? Okay, I'm seeing Jamaro says A twenty first. CJ says B the thirtieth. Jamaro says A the twenty first. <laughs> A twenty first, one hundred percent. Ah, I got the one. All right. Give another moment if anyone's you know, still doing the math. You might have seen it too. We've made a lot of posts and we've talked about it a, a lot um, about which anniversary it is. <laughs> Not so 100%. All right, Eddie's gonna see. All right, let's find out. So it is the 31st anniversary. Okay. All right. So good job, uh, Eddie. Got it. Um, yeah, we've been, been promoting that 30, 31 years. Pretty amazing. Wow. That's a lot of years. July 26th. This, this, it was just this Monday, right? July 26th 
was the day that the ADA was signed into law. So oh. one day was exactly 31 years ago. So if you guess C, you are on point. You got it. Excellent work. All right. Okay. So the Americans with Disabilities Act includes protections for all kinds of disabilities. So can you name what these icons stand for? These are just three um, types of um, people with disabilities that will have protections in the ADA. But do you know from these symbols what they stand for? Mm. Any guesses? What about that first icon on the left, the two, the two hands? What does that stand for? Look. Jamira, oh my goodness. Oh my God. Great work. So Jamira, did you go from left to right? You said service, uh, hold on. You said service dog, right? On the left there. What about the one in the middle? Handicap. Yeah, so we like to use the word um, physical disability. So definitely someone who uses a wheelchair to get around may have a physical disability and they may use the accessible parking spaces in uh, different parking lots, at the mall, at stores. You might see that symbol in the middle right there is usually printed on a sign to let everybody know that, that spot is reserved for someone with a physical disability. Yeah, good job. How about this? How about this icon on the left? What does this stand for? The two hands. Silent. Yes, excellent. Jamira, do you know any sign language? I couldn't hear that. There's a little bit of an echo, but that was an awesome, awesome I guess. Kinda. You got it. Kinda. Okay. Oh, yeah. So we, we got sign language, we're talking about, um, physical uh, disabilities, mm -hmm. and I see dogs, dog, dog sport service dogs, as we just talked about. So, um, you know, there are different sign languages in different countries. And so here we use American Sign Language. And if you see typically the, the middle icon, accessibility. Um, even if it's not something necessarily a physical um, disability, you might see that sign uh, like on a website maybe if it has uh, different um, options to maybe like uh, change the contrast or the size of text or read something aloud. Sometimes you, you might also see the symbol for that. And then we, we have service dogs as we talked about. All right, good job. Okay, so the ADA is separated into sections that are called titles. So how many titles are there in the ADA? Anyone have any idea? Is it one, two, three, four, or five? Okay. Guesses are rolling in. I've seen four, five, no, four, three is in the middle. I mean, you know, it's a fair way to think about it. Another one for five. 
Okay. All right, let's find out. So it is Amy. So there are five. So title one is unemployment. Title two is public services. Title three is public accommodations. Title four is telecommunications. And uh, title five is miscellaneous. So there are five sections, five titles. Good job. And everything we're talking about during this quiz falls into one of those five titles. Oh, 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 oh. And so we'll see your memory now. Ashley just gave this answer before. So what day and month do we celebrate the anniversary of the ADA? So is it July 4th? June 26th, May 11th, August 1st, or July 25th? <laughs> uh, everyone remembers. You guys weren't <laughs> listening. Oh, thank you. Monday Good was job. a big day. It's going to be in your memory now, right? Forever, you're going to remember? Nope. This day. <laughs> Monday was the big day. So yeah, e July 26th. That's right. Okay. Good I job. saw a lot of I saw a lot of posts on social media on Monday celebrating the ADA, letting everybody know, you know, this that was the day 31 years ago that it was passed into law as a federal law. It's not just here in New Jersey, it's the whole country. The ADA is an federal law that affects all of us. Exactly. All right. Good job. Okay. What president signed the ADA into law? Was it A, George H.W. Bush, B, Barack Obama, or C, Bill Clinton? <laughs> All right. Seeing some answers for George H.W. Bush in the chat. We talked about it being in 1990, if that helps anyone. Okay. All right, I'm seeing a lot of A's, got a B in there, maybe A. Okay, it would be. All right. Oh, I see D. Who's which one's D? <laughs> A custom answer. All right. Let's find out. It is A. George H. W. Bush. He also died. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So good job for everyone who put A. So, as I said, um, July 26, nineteen ninety, by George H. W. Bush. Okay. Same year as all those movies. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So this one, not super specifically about the ADA, but, you know, it's relevant um, to self-advocacy. So in what country did the self-advocacy movement start? Do you think it started in the U.S.? in France, in the UK, in Sweden, or in Brazil? I think it's Sweden. Yeah. 
for anybody who's uh, struggling with this answer, I'll give you guys a hint. What? There's a really popular gummy candy that's named after the country where self-advocacy started. A delicious gummy candy. I like gummy. Mm, gummy. It's a oh, very gonna popular know two things one. About this country. Candy. It'll be this candy and self advocacy. That's right. <laughs> Nothing else. <laughs> gummy, okay. gummy, too much gummy. Arthur took the hint there. Nice job, yeah. Arthur. <laughs> Any other guesses? Anybody want to take a guess? We see Arthur, CJ, Jamira, Kwamir. Adam, what? Eddie guessed. Okay, good guesses here. Right. Okay, so let's see the answer. Oh, yeah. 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 like the delicious <laughs> Swedish fish. <laughs> Swedish fish, that was it. <laughs> uh. So the self-advocacy movement can be traced to Sweden, where in the late 1960s, people with intellectual disabilities were supported to create and lead their own leisure clubs. And eventually this became self-advocacy. Uh, so again, you know, a long time, uh, late 1960s. So feels like a while, but, you know, in the grand scheme of things, it hasn't been too long. Okay, good job. All right. Another true or false. Employers cannot ask medical or disability related questions on a job application for a job interview. Okay, seeing a couple of different answers. We got a few A's, a few B's. So do we think if you're on a, you're filling out a job application or an interview, if they can ask you about medical or disability related questions? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right, so this is true. Um, the exception to this is that a government agency can ask an applicant to voluntarily disclose a disability for affirmative action purposes. Um, you know, if they're, they're looking to fill a spot specifically, they want people with disabilities and you think that might help you get this position, it's your choice, you can talk about it. Um, but they, uh, Otherwise, shouldn't be asking you in, the, in your job application or your interview about your disability. Okay. Good job. You guys uh, got a lot of A's there. So, all right. And um, you got through all my questions. <laughs> also, important to know that some job applications will ask you if you are a person with a disability, or they may ask you if you're a veteran, or they may ask you to disclose your ethnic or racial background. But it's also really important to know, you do not have to disclose that information. It's your choice. So when we talk about reasonable accommodations, right? things that we might need on the job to do the job that we're hired for, you may um, need to ask for those things. And it's also up to you if you just say, I'm a person with a disability, so I need certain supports on the job to help me do the job correctly. Basically, it's always your choice to tell people if you have a disability or not. It's up to you. So some people are very comfortable with it. Some people want folks to know what their medical diagnosis is, but 
you do not have to disclose that information. You don't have to tell people if that's not something you want to do. Exactly. Yep. Your decision. Yes. Okay. So how did you do? Did anyone keep track? Do you know how many you got? Did you, uh, you know, do better than you thought you would? I did. Yeah. Probably a world. Nine out of 15, that's pretty good. Yeah, that's yeah. excellent, Jamira. Awesome. All of them. <laughs> DJ. Oh, man. Arthur, too? You sure? No. <laughs> well, we all know uh, all the answers now, right? Yeah. How did you guys do? Five all right. That's all right. That's all right. So guys, I, I would really like to know if someone asked you, what's the ADA? How would you describe it to them? What would you tell them the ADA is about? You can type it in the chat or you can, you know, speak out loud. I'd love to know, how would you guys explain it to someone who doesn't know, who wasn't part of trivia today? It is for uh, people. Can you say that again, Adam? It is for uh, people. Do you want to type it in the chat so I know exactly what you want to say? I'm hearing four people, which it definitely is something that helps protect people. Any other thoughts? What would you guys say if someone said, what is this ADA thing? I saw something online. What is it about? People with disabilities. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Jamira, that's a great description. It is about people with a difference to get into work or school. Um, basically, it's really figuring out, you know, what you need to succeed at, at your work, the work that you want to do. <laughs> okay, guys, so we're yeah. going to wrap it up for the day, but thanks so much for being part of our trivia game today. It was great to see everybody, and we hope you can join us uh, tomorrow for Healthy Lifestyles Project Live at 1 o'clock. All right. Thank you. All right, guys. Thank Take you. care. Bye. Great work today.